the return of the cringe because it is late party conference. It's that time of year, folks, in which yeah. we all get together and look at the screen and wonder what the hell is wrong with them. <laughs> what am I even looking at? <laughs> <laughs> so here's the first thing I wanted to mention so we can get that up, which is just the video we did, uh, the compilation I, I did last time of some of it. And um, yeah, that was the ending there in which some chap decided to scream, you have nothing to lose but your chains, and then give a salute, which he then turned into a fist to try and cover it up. But it was... Because, it was I mean, it really <laughs> looks like a Nazi salute. Yes. Mm, workers of the world. Anyway, so uh, we have another Labour conference, and uh, I thought we'd go through it for fun. So let's go to the next one here, just to get up for the Labour conference, which you can watch on live stream. What is with all these Nazi salutes? I uh, <laughs> This, this <laughs> was during the clapping, and the lady doing the uh, the sign language decided to do that. So uh, okay. that's, that's what happened. So yes, let's uh, let's let's get into it. So if we go to the, the next one, I first want to go around some of the interviews that were going on around the situation. So Angela Rayner, deputy leader, decided to go some side gig and uh, said, we cannot get any worse than a bunch of scum, homophobic, racist, misogynistic, absolute pile of banana republic, Etonian piece of scum, and I've held back a little bit that I have ever seen in my life. Okay, but enough about the Labour Party. <laughs> Tell us what the real problem is. Yeah, so if we go to the next one here, this blew up because it did. And then Keir Starmer said he wouldn't call Tories scum and he's going to talk to <laughs> Angela Rayner. Keir Starmer's <laughs> conciliatory position. Well, I, I would use that language, but he doesn't disavow it, does he? I, I also found it strange that he even attempted to like mediate this because mm. this is stock Labour Party rhetoric. This isn't is new. Even, mm. even from senior members. I mean, last conference, uh, people can go and watch themselves how bad it was, even from senior members. So anyway, she also had one bad interview, so if we go to the next one here, she went on... Um, oh, sorry, this is compared to her <laughs> old stuff. <laughs> yeah, this is an old video she did. MPs need to dial down their language. Eee. And uh, yeah, it didn't. So let's go to the next one. So this is the, the bad interview she gave, in which she was asked uh, why Labour cannot guarantee the safety of its female MPs, given that Rosie Duffield <laughs> is not at the party conference because she didn't feel safe. Uh, Angela Rayner, she, right. she was shocked by the level of misogynistic abuse female MPs get. That's coming from within the Labour Party. Mm. Okay. No clocks ticking in there, apparently. Mm. Anyway, Starmer had a worse one. Before we go on, just say, I just want to have a comment. When she's like, we can't get worse than this bunch of homophobic, racist, misogynistic, banana republic like they're just saying we're just really upset that the Conservatives aren't woke like we are. Yes, and you'll see that in the, in the clips yeah. we get through. So if we go to the next one, we have Starmer, who's having a much worse interview, and we'll play the first clip of this to enjoy. Is it transphobic to say only women have a cervix? <laughs> well, it is uh, something that uh, shouldn't be said. It is not well, right. But, Andrew, I don't think that... So Rosie Duffield should not have said that. Can you explain to people watching why she should not have said that. Well, Andrew, I don't think that um, we can just go through various things that people have said. Rosie Duffield, I spoke to Rosie earlier this uh, week and told her that conference was a safe place for her to come, um, and it is a safe place for her to come. Uh, evidently not. She's not there. Yeah, but um, I love that that's the discussion, right? No one at the Conservative Party conference is going to be, I hate to defend the Conservatives in this, but at least people, you know, Owen Jones was there a year or two ago, just wandering around, and they were all like, piss off, Owen, you prat, yeah. you know? But no one, he wasn't like, oh, I'm afraid for my safety. Mm. You know, no one there was going to assault him for just being there. Punch a Nazi is a phrase that is openly used by leftists. So yeah. Punch a communist is not generally used by rightists. It's, it's no. not part of their culture to no. engage in physical violence for politics. But so the Labour Party conference is a terrifying place if you hold wrong opinions. Yeah. And uh, even, a, you know, an avowed commie like Owen Jones can go to the Conservative Party one safely. I saw Posey Parker actually posted a video on our YouTube channel of someone who did go down to the Labour conference with a big flag saying adult, uh, a human female. Oh, yeah. And uh, that interacted well. with Jess Phillips and, uh, yeah, wasn't happy to see her. Anyway, so let's move on from this because we are getting next one in which the the first trans news reader that's how she describes herself has a problem with him in that interview i'm and saying that uh, i'm happy to come on your program andrew ma and show you my cervix would you like that the gutter level of dehumanizing transphobia on the bbc so india will it be i don't i'm not really familiar so that's, with this that's person a man who believes uh, and wants to be a, a woman so, has, has right. done the thing. so how does she plan on doing that i don't know she doesn't have a cervix yeah so I, I guess, as uh, the commenter points out, we're going to get the first ever, you know, inspection live on TV. And uh, when they don't find it, I, I guess. But again, listen gonna to, to this: the gutter level of dehumanizing transphobia on the BBC. Well, to say that males aren't born with cervixes is not transphobic. Mm. It's just a fact. If we go to the next one, she uh, protected her tweets in response to this, so uh, I imagine <laughs> that got some pushback. Uh, yeah. 
Anyway, let's go to the next <laughs> oh, one. I love the cell phones. Yeah, so we go to the next one. This yeah. is uh, that's all outside of concerts. <laughs> so that's that's the stuff outside conference where they're yeah. interacting with the media or whatever. I I love going inside conference because they live stream it, and you should give it a watch if you've got the time. But if you don't, well, well I've got a solution for you because this one's four hours long, and that's just the first day and each one of the subsequent days for this entire week. Each mm-hmm. one is eight hours long. But anyway, let's let's get to enjoy it because they're great. So let's go for the first speech of the entire event. Let's play the next clip. We're looking at the, as this conference timetable and we can't see where we're able to debate anything about equalities, let alone COVID and equalities. So, okay, okay, okay. You made your point. Where is it? I love it. First speech of the entire conference was a delegate coming up and accusing the conference itself of being racist. Amazing. First speech, conference is racist, righty yo. Yeah. Anyway, so let's go to this uh, next link here just to show, because this one I'm not going to play because it's so goddamn long, is uh, Labour Conference decided that they would get up and clap for all those they've lost in the past year talking about COVID, and so they all get up and clap. For, like Normally three. it's a moment of silence, but okay, they applaud. They applaud their dead instead of moment of silence, which... um. Maybe they didn't like them. I don't, I don't know. But whatever. They take a moment of silence later on for Sabina Nessa, which is a person who was murdered. Right. So they understand the concept, just just not for their own members. Which, <laughs> yeah. So, so this we, went on for an awfully long time, didn't it? God, yes. Uh, About it's, two it's minutes worth. Really strange to watch as well. So if we go to the next one, we have uh, Politics for All reporting that journalists are getting booed at Labour Conference. Based. And in case you're wondering what this is, this was uh, some based action <laughs> yeah don't get me wrong Learn, journalists should be booed so let's go to the, the next Mike, hang on, Mike, before we go on this Michael Malice has got this uh, great one was it the, uh, the average journalist should be considered like a tobacco e- industry executive that's when we know we've succeeded and that's correct let's see how they treat them I'd like to know why the CAC has allowed Murdoch's lion Tory rag to come to this conference I should add that the Sun newspaper is not available at annual conference. It has not been since annual conference in Liverpool in 2016. And we do, we do, however, it's got to be said, welcome journalists from a range of publications, including... Uh, <laughs> Uh, fair enough. Based. Uh, that's the only good thing yeah. I've heard. The rest of his uh, is going to be worse. So they don't sell the sun there, but the sun people can turn up and watch. I mean, yeah. they're live streaming the bloody thing anyway. So let's go to the next one, in which Angela Rayner tries to argue that we beat the Nazis by being Nazis. Let's play. Conference in 1945, our party put forward a manifesto called Let Us Face the Future. And I believe that is our task this week. Then, as now, our country stood together in the face of a global crisis. A crisis that we survived through shared values of collectivism, community and public service. Labour values, British values. In 1945, the country faced a choice between a Tory government who sought the credit for the shared achievement but longed for the status quo that preceded it, where the state would step back and the market would rule again. God, no, anything but that. Uh, but I love that. We, anything we, but being tyrannised by the state. But we also beat the Nazis with our values, British values, of collectivism, community and public service. And having the state dominate all of public life. Yeah. Typical British values, that's right. I'm, I'm an Englishman. Unless you know. she was confusing that with the Soviets and she was fighting on the Soviet <laughs> sides during yeah, the well, war. She, okay. Yeah, that's true. She may be looking at uh, the Soviets there. Yeah, but collectivism, kind of the Nazi thing, not really the individual liberalist thing, is it? No. Anyway, let's go to the next one in which the General Secretary decided to just in-fight with the Corbynites throughout his entire speech. Well, he didn't get much of a choice, to be fair. But uh, let's enjoy. Everybody remembers why they joined Labour. What was it for you? For me... Jeremy Corbyn. Shouts of Corbyn. Well, <clears throat> you know the man who isn't allowed into the Parliamentary Labour Party. Okay. In my first job, which was for Croydon Trades Council, I learnt about organising and solidarity. <laughs> <laughs> We've moved resolutely to tackle anti-Semitism. <laughs> We're delivering an action plan to drive it out of our party. 
sure what I could use them. You can. Right. I'm working hands-on with the Jewish community to regain their trust. That's why, confidence, with your support, we will have, by December, an independent complaints process for all forms of discrimination. But we can't just deal with symptoms. That's why all party staff, MPs and thousands of members have already taken anti-Semitism training provided by our great <laughs> Jewish labour movement. No, anti-Semitism training makes why I set training up a diversity and inclusion board. For the first time ever, we're auditing the diversity of our organisation and acting on it. Voters will ask us, what is the difference between the Labour Party and the Conservative Party? Well, <laughs> thank you for your courtesy. <laughs> so, yeah, you can hear them just constantly cheering him. Um, well, that, that's gold. That's absolute gold. I mean, the, you know, when they say not much is the difference. Unfortunately, that's kind of true. Mm. You know, the Conservatives are, you know, have a deep strain of wokeness running through them, which is very annoying. But also over the pandemic period, massive state involvement. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. I mean, the country, I do feel like the country's being run by Jeremy Corbyn, to be honest. You know, yeah. V made the point the other day. It's like, you know, you know, like when Jeremy Corbyn said he lost the election but won the argument, well... I mean, is he wrong? Yeah, it's like, no. There's also him talking about anti-Semitism training, and you can hear the occasional jeer or boos coming out of the clapping there as well, which is of interest. The clapping and, uh, was for the anti-Semitism. Yeah. And he's been trained in how to be a better anti-Semite. Oh, boy. Anyway, so uh, next thing. So this is day one, right? So day one... <laughs> this is day one! <laughs> <laughs> also on day one, they decided to start begging the audience for more bames because they weren't happy that they looked too white, apparently. Mm. So let's play this clip. And I'm conscious we haven't had any black, Asian, minority, ethnic speakers yet, so is there anybody? Guy over there, possibly. <laughs> uh, this is what identity politics does to you. Well, like, you know, Kemi Badenoch and Priti Patel are just, like, glowering from, you know, the, you know, it, like... Uh, look, if I got it, it's a very white looking uh, audience. Yeah, so let's get this next link up. Labor. So that's us. I love the over there, possibly. <laughs> 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 but this is uh, uh, day two, which I, I've got to jump forward to and then and then we'll go back. But just on day two, you can see GB News reporting here. Too many white men putting their hands up to speak, Labour delegates are told. During a debate <laughs> on housing and transport, the chairman of the session noted the people putting their hands up to contribute did not reflect the diversity of those in the hall. He was very upset. So anyway, I, if we go to the next one... I oh, hang on, hang on. Can we just, just linger we're on We're going to get to it. It's part okay. of the clip. So we go to the next one. We have uh, uh, just the full clip in case people are interested. And we're going to play the full clip because it's so much more gold than they're uh, making it out to be. God. Let's play. I am going to use this opportunity to ask for more speakers. But before anyone puts their hands up, I am aware, sitting here, one, it is very difficult to see all of you. There are very bright lights, which you can't really see when you sat down there. And two... The people putting their hands up do not reflect the diversity of the people in this hall, and that is very clear to me. I am afraid, and I'm not speaking from a position of particular strength here, there are too many white men putting their hands up. Labour, 2021. I, I am not anti-white men. Thanks for letting Some us of know. my favourite people. My dad's a white man. Very convincing. But... I do not want white men to exclusively dominate this or any other debate at this conference. And following on from my comrade in the chair this morning, I do wish to see the diversity of the hall reflected. I'm not putting anybody on the spot here, but if you want to speak, do yes, not be yes. afraid to put your hand up. We want to hear from you. This is an inclusive conference. Hands up now, please, bearing that in mind. Thank you. This is an inclusive conference, so keep in mind, no whiteies. <laughs> <laughs> I so I love that like, like he's trying to make fun of people who are like, oh, I'm not racist, I've got black friends. Yeah. But like the people who usually do that aren't saying no darkies at my conference. Yeah. And that's what he's saying about the whiteies. Yeah. He wants no whiteies at the conference. Unbelievable. Anyway, so also he's blind, I assume, because I just found the four previous speakers before he gave that statement, hmm. and. Uh, uh, the first guy is Palestinian stuff so I don't know well, maybe white we'll assume he's white white man and then mm -hmm. next one white man maybe but then you have a uh, white woman then you have uh, an Indian man white man <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what like cracky smoking if you can scroll down I put four more so the four more below this one as well and uh, again all white men uh, three of them are women huh. so uh, I, but, I mean I suppose you were saying from the audience putting their hands up right but, but the still, thing is if you look at the audience it looked like a gammon fest 
<laughs> if you like, uh, if you want to describe it like that, but uh, well, yeah, they they yeah, I, that's how I don't see work. why I can't yeah. if they're going to do it that way. Yeah. But I love this, uh, like you know, Labour twenty twenty one, no more white men. Okay, thanks. Yeah, we get a, the next one as well. I just want to mention some more stuff. So apparently, Labour went clubbing afterwards. <laughs> So the guys are all wearing masks, all insisting that the country wear masks. Sadiq Khan, a man who is currently enforcing a mask mandate on, uh, what is it, London Transport, mm -hmm. uh, went clubbing that night. And you can see him there. Social Dawn Butler, no mask. Sadiq Khan, no mask. Yeah. Not social distancing. But who's surprised by this? But I hope they're having a good time being I, I massive hypocrites. We're going to carry on. So we go to the, the next one. Uh, Labour Green New Deal decided to tweet something out. And it's mega cringe. So I've cut it down a little bit for time, but we'll enjoy. So let's go to the next clip and enjoy this. Capitalism is incapable of solving the problems it's created. Left to their own devices, bosses will continue to extract profits, exploit workers, lobby governments <laughs> to halt change and argue that our demands are radical, unreasonable, unworkable. Do not believe corporations when they say little individual lifestyle changes are good enough. Even with global lockdowns, emissions in 2020 were only 7% less than 2019. Only the structural systemic change can save workers here and those in the global south and climate refugees who will be disproportionately affected. We must cancel the debt of low-income countries so that they can fund their just transitions. And a just transition does not mean leaving workers behind, but putting our class front and centre with retraining and funding to put skills and experience to best use in socially useful work. Born in Middlesbrough, raised in the North East, I saw these long-term effects of that try deindustrialisation conference. But the composite one for a socialist Green New Deal. I mean, the Benito Mussolini hands are to yeah. the side. Uh, but the, 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 look at her. She's like, yes, we need to reform all of the economy and deindustrialize because it's harming the global self. Therefore, we should cut their debts. And then train our workers. Presumably, she's not objecting to bringing in the foreign laborers for the HGV strike. But her complaint is that I, I saw the effects of deindustrialization where I lived. Therefore, let's do it again. Bro, we'll retrain this time and everything will just work. No, no you, you idiot. How did you miss this me lesson so easily? But also, you, you know, you take away debt of some country, well, they'll just take out more debt because why wouldn't you? It's cheap. Anyway, <laughs> well, so if you're going to get it cancelled in a few decades' time, just do it again. Yeah, what's the point? Anyway, so the, the Labour Equality Minister also celebrated taking the knee, so let's go for the next clip. Conference equality is the core commitment of our party. It runs through us like the writing in a stick of Brighton Rock we saw it this summer when our brilliant England football team took the knee together to say enough is enough. They failed to condemn those who booed the England players for taking a stand, showing themselves to be utterly out of touch with the people of this country. The Tories say they want a war on woke. Well, you know what I want, conference? I want a war on inequality. I just okay. love that. Like these millionaire footballers and her are all in agreement. We're, we're in touch because we're obsessing over socialist concepts like equality. Mm -hmm. But the, the Tories, they're out of touch because they want to destroy that with their war on woke. Like, right, I think one of you is correct and yes. not the other. Which one has the massive majority, historic majority, mm. just out of interest, love? And who's out of government. Yeah, and, and is looking like he's going to be out of government for quite some time. Yeah. Yes. We'll go to the, the next clip here, which is just the Equality Minister uh, demonstrating the point that she gets the biggest clap when she talks about trans rights compared to anything <laughs> else. So let's play this. A Labour government that would introduce a Race Equality Act to tackle structural racism and inequality at source. A Labour government that would make tackling violence against women and girls a priority. That's right, that's what we do. But not green and gangs. I'm not going to mention that. No more excuses. A Labour government that acknowledges that trans rights are human rights. <laughs> <laughs> a Labour government 
and stopped. Uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> There's <laughs> the anyway. turf. So I wanted to set that up because she's uh, the big thing for them is now, of course, trans rights, uh, let's mm. say, or trans privileges because uh, everyone yes. has the same number of rights, you moron. That's how human rights work. Even trans people have human rights. That's how that works. Anyway, but uh, that's... Don't know uh, why I have to say that. Then they had a debate about some motions they had and they're on women's issues. And uh, let's see how that debate ended up uh, transpiring. Next clip, please. I'm very proud to support this, actually, because, as you can see, I'm a transgender lady. And... Uh... <laughs> thank you, thank you. The thing is, with COVID, women were affected far more than, than anybody else, really. Social justice, equality and inclusion can never be achieved without recognition and support for all women and marginalised groups. This motion supports BAME women, disabled women, women of all sexualities, trans women, cis women, non-binary people, young women, older women, women who cross many sectors and women feel who do not fit, feel they fit any label society tries to give them. Conference, violence against women and girls also includes violence against black, brown, minoritized women, LBTQ+, and disabled women. We must continue to support funding the specialist services which saves lives. We need to continue to stop the closure of black, brown, minoritized refugees and support services. I'm in support of this motion. As you can tell, I'm a trans woman. But since I became a woman, I have experienced undue harassment and violence against my person, not only by misogynistic men, but by women as well. <laughs> That's right. The problem is misogynists. Putting the uh, hello femil fellow women aside for a minute, I, I wanted to first talk about the that lady there who was arguing for increased funding of minoritized refugees. Shelters, yeah. I, I, did, I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, audience, but I, I, I spoke about this uh, to you yesterday as well. I'm not sure there are segregated refugees on the basis of race in the UK. But I mean, uh, what they'll say is, well, look, you know, due to the um, immigration into the UK and the way it's been done, some refugees just don't really have any English people around. And so they're minoritized. I, I suppose. But otherwise, I guess she's arguing for segregated refugees, which is uh, one thing. But also the other one there, the lady trying to list like, oh, yeah, so this motion is for women. Uh, also, uh, of all sexualities, of all genders, uh, and you can see how umming and erring as she goes through all these different lists of types if of I women. If I forget something, am I in trouble? <laughs> yeah, and then she ends up going to women however they identify, regardless of what term society puts on them. And I love that. It's women plus. Like the LGBT... <laughs> women plus. Yeah, literally. That's like the, good. The yeah. LGBTQ plus. Yeah. You know how they just yeah. give up and just go, right, any letter out of the sun. Yeah. So it's just women plus whatever. Well, you're going to need a shorthand. Yeah. So that is their shorthand. Women plus. That's how they're going to define women from now on. Hmm. Well, mixing doesn't really take off, so I guess women plus will... Uh, I think women yeah. plus is a really great uh, way of framing it, actually. I don't think they can resist it. Anyway, that's a, a taste of the cringe. If you would like more, I've uh, done a short compilation of day one. It's about nine minutes long. Well, ten minutes long, actually. And uh, go and enjoy that on the second YouTube channel. What is it? Lotus Eaters .com. Yeah. We'll, we'll pin it in the comments and put it in the description so you can yeah. go check it out because it's, uh, it's a very hilarious edit. Yeah, but uh, that's going to be going on all week. I won't bore with it all week, but uh, I'm going to be watching because it's funny. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast The Lotus Eaters, you can go over to lotuseaters.com to subscribe to get access to all the premium content we have. The way the site works is that you have bronze, silver, and gold tier subscriptions. The bronze being £5 a month and allows you to get access to all of the premium content and leave comments on the articles. And we've got a new feature for the silver tier, which is, and the silver and gold tier, which is having all of the premium articles uh, accompanied by an audio track of a very smooth British voice reading, as you can see on the screen there. It's only an 11 minute uh, list or it's uh, you know however long it takes you to read the article so that's for convenience so that's for gold and silver members and uh, we've also got all of our regular great content which we're all really proud of i mean the uh, the premium podcast that we have here is progressing to destruction where that's uh, just a lot of work where it went into examining exactly what the consequences of mass immigration have been in britain and this was a great deal of uh, effort to put together and we didn't really want it being taken down from YouTube or anywhere else so we're hosting it on our site and we're very pleased with well 
what is, I suppose, a bit of a negative response, but not because of anything uh, we've done, but because of the facts of the matter, it seems. Uh, but we also do various other premium podcasts, like uh, The Contemplations, such as Are There Human Rights? Well, it depends on whose definition of what a human right you are using is. And of course, we do our regular history podcast called Epochs. Uh, this week's was The Sea People, The Terror of the Bronze Age. I really enjoyed doing this one because there was a great collapse about 3,000 years ago of the entire economy of the eastern Mediterranean, and it seems that a bunch of piratical raiders may have been partially responsible for that, and possibly inspired the Trojan cycle from Homer. So we discuss that in that. And uh, of course we do our book club. Uh, for some reason I decided that we'd highlight the George Orwell ones that we've been doing, so we've got his Road to Wigan Pier, and of course the classic 1984, and I'll probably do uh, Shooting an Elephant next. Have you ever read that? Not heard of it. It's really interesting. It's about George Orwell's time as a colonial administrator and police officer in Burma. Uh, Burma. And uh, at one point in his narrative, an elephant goes on the rampage in a village and it's killing people and destroying houses. So he has to go down and shoot it. And it is an absolutely fascinating look at the sort of colonial dynamics. The reason I haven't done a book club uh, this month so far is because I'm currently going through the Critical Race Theory Bible. As you can see, it's 500 pages long and I'm about two thirds of the way through. And there are going to be many very in-depth book clubs coming out of that because the things they believe are crazy and conservatives need to know about them. But anyway, if you'd like access to all that premium content, please go over to lotuseaters.com, subscribe. Thank you.